So we're going to talk about multicast on a Cisco wireless LAN, or just on a regular wireless LAN as well. Um, so we're going to go through a little uh, intro. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about how Vocera uses multicast. I know I'm not supposed to mention vendors, but it's just to give you an idea of the, uh, how the packets are flowing. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, IGMP background. We're going to talk about enable multicast on the VLANs, talk about which VLANs need uh, PIM, uh, talk about the purpose of DTEM, uh, the basic mandatory and data rates, uh, issues we've seen with TKIP and AES on the same SSID, uh, issues with multi multiple rendezvous points, um, IGMP snooping on switches, uh, roaming, uh, issue with multicast buffers, and uh, multicast packets on a controller network, as well as, well as configuring multicast on a controller network, uh, IGMP snooping on the controller, and um, uh, talk about uh, uh, issues, uh, troubleshooting multicast issues, and then troubleshooting multicast issues using a multicast hammer. Uh, talk about some Cisco commands and some links. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dermot Allen. I'm the guy that passed out the caramels. Did you guys like the caramels? All right, good deal, all right. Well, we have more tomorrow, so if you didn't get any, I'll try to start in the back of the room there. Um, I'm a senior uh, wireless imp uh, implementation engineer for uh, Vocera. Um, I've been with them about four years. Uh, before that, I was with Hillrom for about 11 years. Um, so basically, I go through hospital networks and validate them that they work well, that our product will work well on their network. So the first thing I normally do is ask for the controller config and, and um, um, uh, floor plans, and then just go through that config and make sure that, it's, that all the settings are right for our device to be on their network. Um, I have my uh, AP, SP, and DP. I haven't got my NE yet. I gotta get going on that uh, before one of those expire, but uh, hopefully we'll get that soon. Uh, Twitter handle is uh, Wi-Fi uh, NC, and uh, I have a blog at Wi-Fi NC.net. Um, two volunteer things that I do um, is, uh, one is the uh, WLA, I'm a chapter manager in, the, in North Carolina, and then, um, uh, I volunteer with ITDRC too. Uh, okay, so uh, so like I said, I work for Voxera, and we do a uh, we have our product uses uh, multicast as an integral part of our network. Uh, we have a feature called broadcast that allows one badge to talk to many badges. So if I hit the hit the button, I say call ER or broadcast to ER. Um, it's going to uh, ring all the ER badges, and I'm going to talk, and everyone's going to hear me, right? So that's basically, of course, one to many. And this is done with multicast packets on the network. Um, <clears throat> if the multicast packets are being blocked on the network somewhere, we have a condition that's called chime. We call it chime no audio, right? So the, basically, uh, you hit the button. Um, you hit the button on the badge, say broadcast to ER, all the badges go bling, they, they've joined it, and uh, there's no voice coming out to the rest of the badges. The, the uh, broadcaster will be talking, and no one will hear it because the packets are getting blocked on the network somewhere. And basically what happens is when you hit that button, uh, 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 the server will send a, a message to all the badges telling everyone to join a particular uh, multicast group. Uh, and then when those badges join, that's when you hear the chime. And then hopefully you'll hear uh, audio going after that. If, if not, then, then you get the, the blocked thing. So I, I've been on uh, many conference calls and on site, and uh, with customers troubleshooting multicast issues, and a lot of the issues turn out to be the, uh, the multicast packets are getting blocked somewhere on the network. And it's usually one of the VLANs is not set up correctly. Uh, just a little uh, background here, IGMP. Uh, Cisco uses uh, in that group messaging protocol to manage multicast traffics. Uh, when a, um, uh, when a uh, session is started, a client or server will send a join message, and then uh, whoever else wants to join, or whatever the client wants to join, send a join message as well. These will get recorded on your uh, network's router plus on the rendezvous point. Um, <clears throat> 
So if you're going to enable multicast on your network, of course, uh, you got to use uh, on. Uh, on a router or any layer three device, you gotta run uh, the command IP multicast dash routing. And the second thing you need to do on all your VLANs where multi where multi-class traffic is gonna go, you have to enable uh, PEM, uh, uh, protocol independent multicast. And the command for that is PIM sparse dash dense mode. You can use sparse or dense mode, but it's always recommended to use sparse dense mode. Uh, which VLANs do you need PIM on, right? And this is always the the hundred thousand dollar question. It may seem may seem like an obvious thing, but uh, you know we always ask the ask the customer to set this up before we get on site. And nine times out of ten, they're always like, "Oh yeah, it's set up, it's working, no problem at all." We get on site, we hit the button, broadcast the ER, boom, you get chime the audio. Uh, and uh, so the the, the VLANs where you need it enabled on is the management VLAN, um, the AP management VLAN if it's different from the management VLAN, and the AP uh, VLAN if that's different. And then, of course, the VLAN for the sending and receiving devices as well. Uh, another thing, too, if you have... Um, if you have uh, all your traffic going back to a core and you have trunks or uh, port channels or ether channels going back to the core uh, and you have VLANs on those, that, that needs to be enabled as well. Uh, the purpose of DTIM, uh, I know this is sort of a basic thing, but uh, it seems to come up a lot uh, when I get on site. Um, the DTIM is, uh, of course, is. Uh, uh, information element, it's a delivery traffic indication map or message, an information element inside the beacon that'll tell uh, clients they have multicast packets to be delivered. Um, that's gotta be set to one, or we always tell uh, people to set it to one. Um, if you set it to two or higher and you're using uh, uh, voice over multicast, you're gonna hear choppy audio. Uh, uh, and the, the reason for that is those packets are only gonna get delivered every two or 300 milliseconds, four or 500 milliseconds, no matter what the uh, DTIM is set to. Um, and you definitely hear choppiness even on the 200 milliseconds. So you, you would think 200 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, what's the difference? It's very, very quick, who cares, right? But most uh, VoIP clients have a, um, have a jitter buffer of 100, you know, 120 milliseconds, 150 milliseconds, so even 200 milliseconds is not enough to cover that buffer, and that's where you start hearing choppy audio. Um, some device manufacturers will tell you that uh, you, know, uh, you want to set a higher DTIM value to let the device sleep a little bit longer. Um, this is sort of a valid point. Um, uh, but if you're using voice over multicast, it has to be set to the, to the, low, uh, to the lowest level as one. Um, the fact of the matter, actually, when I was uh, back in, when I was at Hillrom and with Osera, I'd always, uh, you know, always press the point, okay, DTM's gotta be one. I understood why, you know, I always, I always told the customer that. Uh, but in my mind, I thought that the, uh, that the badges or devices would have to wake up for every DTIM message so it doesn't, doesn't miss any multicast packets, but it's not really the case. You can have, uh, your device can sleep for longer. It's not like a mandatory thing where your device has to wake up at, uh, at each uh, multicast packet. For an example, our Vocera badge will sleep for 500 milliseconds. And uh, uh, um, a good way you can, a quick way you can figure this out is um, uh, if you have a badge or a device that's not on the network, ping it and see what the response time is, right? And then uh, have it engage in a conversation and ping it again and see what the device times. You'd be surprised to see that it probably is sleeping longer than your, you know, 100, 200 milliseconds. Another thing I want to bring up too is the AP, of course, can only uh, buffer those multicast packets as long as the DTIM value is, right? So if DTIM value is one every 100 milliseconds, it's got to kick those packets out if it has multicast packets to deliver. If it's two or three, or every two, 300 milliseconds, it's got to kick it out. Um, <clears throat> basic and mandatory data rates. I know Cisco always recommends having two mandatory data rates. I've seen three and four on some customers. More than likely, most people set it just as two, uh, as the 12 and the 24. 
Uh, we always recommend having at the lower one because the problem is the management traffic, of course, will go out at the, at the 12, but any multicast traffic is going to go out at the higher data rate. And you can have issues where uh, the badges have moved away from the AP too far and it's not getting those multicast packets. And trying to, trying to troubleshoot that is almost impossible, right? You're going to have to figure out where those devices were, what their data rate was at the time, how come this, you know, Joey's getting the multicast packets, but you know, Bobby isn't, and you know, Nurse Betty is over here, she gets them, so it's, it's very difficult. So we try to sort of, you know, keep it, you know, the, the KISS example, right? Keep it simple, stupid, right? Just uh, set one uh, data rate, uh, one mandatory or basic data rate. All the other data rates, of course, can be supported. Um, issues using TKIP and AES on the same SSID. Uh, hopefully no one's using TKIP anymore, right? It's been deprecated, but every once in a while I'll go on site and they still have, still someone's using TKIP possibly for uh, uh, an older, older device that needs to use TKIP, but uh, I'm not sure. But if you run it on the same SSID, uh, the unicast packets and everything will go out uh, at AES as the, the device connected to it. But, uh, but the, but the multicast packets will go out to TKIP. So if your device is using AES and uh, the multicast packets are coming down, it's coming down as TKIP and your device is not gonna, not gonna understand what's, you know, what those packets are, it won't be able to decrypt those packets. <clears throat> uh, issues of rendezvous points. So of course there's two ways you can do a rendezvous point, right? You can have the network uh, choose one for you or you can manually choose one. So if you manually choose one, we've seen issues where people say, well, for redundancies, let's get two and three, you know, two, or oh, two, I mean not three, but uh, two rendezvous points on the network for, for redundancy purposes. But we've seen issues where uh, if you have uh, different VLANs, different VLANs are gonna be uh, uh, reporting up to different rendezvous points and you're gonna do your uh, multicast traffic. Whoever's on that same rendezvous point with you will get the traffic. Whoever's on the other one won't get the traffic. So again, keep it simple. We'd rather have just one rendezvous point on your network. You can have the rendezvous points talk to each other, but again, just keep it simple. Just make one on your network there. Um, <clears throat> IGMP snooping on switches, right? This sort of allows the switch to keep track of where those multicast packets are going. Um, similar to maybe a, a cam table, right, where the, the switch is looking at the, at the MAC addresses coming in, making a cam table, and says, okay, if I, if I, see, a, uh, if I see a packet for this, uh, for the particular MAC address, I'll throw it down that network or that port, sort of the same thing with the IGMP snooping. It's looking at all the join messages and saying, okay, I know there's a, there's a for this multicast address or a group, I know there's a port down, you know, port one or a port two. So it doesn't have to send them down to all the multicast. Uh, all, doesn't have to send it down to all the ports in the switch. Um, roaming, right? We've seen uh, problems at roaming uh, with the, uh, uh, so when a client roams from AP to AP, um, it should send a new join message for each roam, right? And we've seen uh, issues where the, uh, the client doesn't send a new join message, right? So then all of a sudden the packets get to the AP, the AP is looking at its MGID table and not realizing that there's a, that there's a client on that AP for that, uh, for that session and it just drops the traffic. Uh, the multicast buffers, right? So <clears throat> issues of multicast buffers. So the multicast buffers are, are shared across all uh, BSSIDs uh, per the radio, right? Um, so for each uh, radio, you can have different, uh, different multicast buffer, but it's one shared equally throughout all the BSSIDs. So you can have an issue where if you have a high number of uh, SSIDs, or even if you have a high DTIM value of those SSIDs, right, your, your AP's gotta hold on to that traffic a lot longer. Um, so it's, um, so you, you, could, uh, you could get into a situation where your multicast buffer is getting overrun and starts dropping multicast packets. Um, so if you do that, you can, uh, two things you can do, you can increase the size of the multicast buffer, or you can, uh, you can, in, you can uh, determine, you can sort of force uh, which VLANs or which WLANs will use that multicast buffer. Uh, multicast, 
multicast packs on a control base somewhere. So when a client sends an IGMP uh, message uh, to to the AP, it goes to the AP, goes through the CapWap tunnel and uh, and uh, hits the controller. The controller then absorbs that and sends a new join message out onto the network using, of course, its IP address, not the IP address of the client. Um, <clears throat> So multicast packets from a, a wired client, right? So if you're getting multicast packets coming in from, from the wired, not, not the wireless, uh, the wired, the, the, uh, it'll hit the rendezvous point, which will come down to your controller. The controller will uh, get that, um, get that uh, packet and uh, encapsulate that in, in its own multicast address and send that down to all the APs. All the APs then will strip off that, mul that multicast address and see the original one and then it'll check in its MGID table, its multicast group ID table, to see if it's got a client for that. If it doesn't, uh, then it'll drop the packet. If it does, it'll send that, uh, send that down to the client. Um, so if it comes from the uh, wireless client, right, if a multicast packet comes from the wireless client, um, and the wireless client sends it to the AP, goes through the CapWap tunnel, hits the controller. The controller will make two copies of that, send one out to the network, out to your router and rendezvous point, and if there's any other devices that need that uh, multicast traffic on the wire network. The second copy it'll make is, uh, um, it, it'll encapsulate that into its um, multicast address of the, of the uh, controller and send that down to the APs. The AP again will look in its, will strip it off, strip off its, uh, the controller's multicast address, look in its, look in the original one, and uh, look in its MGID table, and if it's got a client for that multicast address, it'll send it down. Here's a, here's a, uh, a graph of BARD from Cisco. Thank, thank you, Cisco, for that. Um, you can see our multicast, uh, our multicast source is one of our badges uh, down there, right? And it's sending traffic up to the, uh, to the AP, to the controller, using one of our, our multicast addresses, 230.230.x.x, you know. Um, and then when it hits the controller, the controller then it's gonna encapsulate that in its multicast address, which is the purple, actually, which is 239.0.65. It's gonna send it down to all the APs or it's gonna send it out in all the APs because they're listening to that multicast address. They're gonna hear that, um, they're, they're gonna hear and get that packet. Um, they're gonna, again, they're gonna strip that out. They're gonna look at the original multicast address. They're gonna look at the MGID table. If it's got a client uh, for that, it's gonna send it out. If not, it's gonna drop it. And you can see most of them are just, the APs are just dropping uh, them, but the one on the right-hand side, you can see it's sending it out and sending it out to either the original multicast address. Um, <clears throat> so uh, configuring uh, multicast on a Cisco controller, of course, there's two ways you could do it. You could do a multicast unicast or multicast multicast. A multicast unicast, every time the controller gets a multicast packet, it's gonna change that into unicast, right? And it's, okay, and it's gonna send that out to all the APs. So that's okay on a small network, right? But if it's on a larger network with, you know, you know 50, 100, 200, 1,000, 2,000 APs, whatever, uh, you, you're gonna wanna use uh, multicast. Otherwise, that's gonna be, the unicast is gonna be way too much traffic on your network. Um, so this is uh, on a Cisco controller here, right? So you wanna choose on the uh, AP multicast mode there, you wanna, the drop down, you wanna choose the multicast, and then you wanna put a multicast um, address in that's uh, particular to that controller. You wanna use, the, you can't use the same multicast address throughout all your controllers, right? You wanna use, just use that one for that controller. Because all the APs then that join that controller the uh, the uh, controller is going to say, "Hey, okay, all, all the uh, all the, uh, everyone join this uh, multicast address, right?" And then all the APs will send those that join message to that multicast address. Um, IGMP snooping on uh, on the controller. When IGMP snooping is enabled on the controller, it uh, it creates a multicast group ID table, which keeps track of the clients. Um, uh, that have joined the multicast group. Uh, the controller then sends the MGID table to all the APs on that controller. 
course, the AP gets that, gets those multicast packets. It's going to look at that MGID table and then we'll decide whether it's going to dump or send those packets out. Uh, IGMP snooping on a controller, right? If uh, IGMP snooping is enabled um, on the controller, um, so, so I'd be, uh, IGMP snooping, sorry, is enabled on the controller, then it's gonna create the MGID table and send that out and be able to send that out all to APs and keep track of who's, sent, who's joined that multicast group and who hasn't joined that multicast group. Uh, troubleshooting multicast issues, right? Uh, the PIM protocol independent multicast uh, has gotta be enabled on all your, all your uh, VLANs where your multicast traffic will traverse. Uh, two ways, of course, you could check this. You can SSH into all the, the routers and the path and see, make sure the, it's set up on those particular VLANs. Um, the other thing you can do is when the client joins multicast address, you can look to see in the, in the router or switches, make sure those uh, join messages are, are flowing through your network. Sort of talk about this already, but the uh, you know which uh, which devices or which VLANs actually sorry need the multicast address. Uh, it should be a management VLAN, AP VLAN if it's different, uh, AP management VLAN of course if it's different, and then the VLAN of the sending and receiving devices. Uh, troubleshooting multicast issues, right? So. Um, uh, the uh, management VLAN, of course, is is uh, is the important one. That's the one that gets missed a lot of the times, right? I get on site after the the uh, after this after the network admin has said, "Yeah, yeah everything's set up, everything's running." Uh, you get on there, you get chime no audio. Um, sorry about that. You get chime no audio, and then. Um, and you know, a lot of times it's it's because the management traffic and the management traffic is very the management VLAN is very important because that's what the controller is going to send down to the APs on. Um, so uh, so so a lot of times that when we get on site, you know, we, with the uh, network admin will ask us, okay, you know, we'll list the device, the VLANs that needs to be enabled on, and they'll say, okay, well, where on my router is that? You know, show show me all the routers and all throughout the hop and where I have to enable it on. But for a guy walking out of the street, off the street, that doesn't know his network, you know, we're not gonna help him there. We, we could just give him the sort of basic information on that, then we ask him to get Cisco or uh, the other wireless vendor uh, involved. Um, to help them walk through their network. Um, again, the, the, the second point down there, we talked, I talked about that before, the, the port channel, right, or the ether channel, the, you have trunk back to your main core, uh, make sure the VLANs, make sure that VLAN has got, um, has got uh, PIM enabled on it, and I've seen where uh, it, it, I've seen where one had it on it and one didn't. And you know, you, you send a multicast packet, you broadcast to ER, uh, it, it works. You hang up, you do it again, and all of a sudden it doesn't work, and you keep going back and forth. And what's happening is the you know it's going through the hitting the one trunk that's got the, the PIM enabled, and then it's uh, getting blocked by the second trunk because it didn't have PIM enabled. So you got to make sure you have all of those enabled. Um, so after you've, uh, all, all your VLANs are fine, you, a couple other things you want to check, which sort of talked about already, uh, DTIM, uh, TKIP, multiple uh, RPs, IGMP snooping, multicast, and roaming. So the DTIM, right? So you, you uh, again, you got to, you know, it's very, very important to have that. It's set as one, otherwise you're going to hear uh, choppy, mul choppy audio on that, right? Um, and there are a couple of places you can look. Of course, you can look at the you know, go go on the GUI controller, look look on that, make sure you can uh, make sure you can uh, see it on there. If you have a config file, which is what I normally do before I go on site, I'll have the config file. I'll take a look at it there. Or if you're on site, you could do a wireless capture and take a look at it. Uh, of course, the DTIM is going to be uh, under the traffic indication map of the beacon. Um, and so you want to look at your DTIM count. If it's set to zero, uh, you're looking at a, a, a beacon that's got DTIM, DTIM information in it. If it's set to one, uh, then uh, your next DTIM, your next uh, beacon is going to have DTIM uh, uh, information in it. 
And here's a wireless capture there uh, showing that the uh, DTIM count, of course, is zero and your uh, DTIM period is one. If you saw a DTIM period of two or three or four without even testing, you know you're going to have choppy audio on that network. Uh, TKIP, right? TKIP and AES have it on the same SSID. We talked about that. Uh, not doing that. And if you can, again, you can look at the controller or you can look at the, uh, the wireless config for that. And wireless config, it's going to be under the uh, RSN information there, under the uh, pairwise uh, Cypher suite, and it'll be listed as AES. If it was, the TKIP was enabled on there, you'd see that on there as well. Uh, multi uh, troubleshooting, uh, multiple rendezvous points, right? Talked about that. If you have multiple rendezvous points, then you can have issues where the uh, um, where you uh, you have your your the any any uh, devices on the one uh, rendezvous point is going to hear the multicast traffic. Anyone on the other uh, rendezvous point, you're not going to you're not going to get those multicast packets. Um, to see if uh, IGMP snooping is enabled on your switches, your command show I IP IGMP snooping, and then uh, if you need to enable it, uh, you just put enable at the end. You do IP IGMP snooping enabled to kick that off. Uh, the buffers, right? We talked about the, the buffers. So if you have uh, a high DTIM values or if you have a lot of SSIDs on your, on your network uh, and you have a lot of multicast traffic, you're gonna, you may see an issue where you're going to um, have uh, um, your multicast buffers being overrun and your multicast packets being dropped. So each radio by default is going to handle uh, 50 multi cast packets at a time, and it's going, to be, uh, it's going to be equally shared through all your SSIDs. Um, if you want to see on your, uh, if you want to see multicast buffers, you can run that command show controller.11 radio, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then if you wanted to uh, increase that uh, buffer size, you could do the config wireless LAN multicast buffer to whatever size you want and assign it to whatever wireless LAN ID you, you need to increase that buffer size for. Uh, roaming, right? We talked about this where you, know, you can have an issue with the devices uh, if they don't send a new join message. I think some of the uh, newer controllers probably uh, will, will tell the AP, will, will tell the device to send a new join message if it doesn't. Uh, but in an autonomous world or a cloud based AP where there's, there's uh, there's no there's no controller to tell you that if your device isn't sending a new join message, you're going to uh, see issues with that. And the issues, of course, would be when your uh, the multicast packets go to the AP where you're at. It's going to still think you're there. And when the uh, multicast packets get down to the your new AP, because it never saw a join message, it's going to think no one's there. It's going to dump that multicast traffic. Uh, multicast hammer. Um, uh, this is a uh, free tool um, that you can use for uh, troubleshooting multicast. Uh, it was in, actually built by Nortel, which, you know, I, I joke it's the only thing in Nortel left around, but there's still some PBXs out there, Nortel PBXs. But the, uh, um, so it's it's a really good tool because it takes out your uh, takes out your devices or anything like that right? any program you have if you're having trouble with multicast you know right away it's easy to think oh it's got to be the server or the program that's causing my issues on my multicast so this thing takes it out of t out of you totally right so if I go on site they'll, they they may blame okay Vocera is not sending the packets the right way well I can take out multicast hammer and show them exactly show them the raw traffic of that multicast. Uh, traffic. Um, so you want to run multicast hammer on two machines, uh, one set up as server, one set up as client, leave them on the same uh, BSSID, and then uh, uh, send messages and, and show that the traffic is getting, uh, getting passed. Uh, once you do that, then you want to start moving that client around to other uh, VLANs or uh, uh, other, uh, other VLANs and uh, to, uh, to, to test it again to see if the, the, the traffic's being blocked. If it's being blocked, then all of a sudden you know, okay, it's, um, that, that could be my issue over there. I'm not gonna go through the whole install, of course. It's a very, for, fairly simple install. Just a couple of things to point out. One of them has gotta be uh, set up as server, and one of them's gotta be set up as client. Um, 
Of course, and then uh, you want to make sure, another thing you want to make sure of this is you've got the right uh, network interface uh, enabled on that, otherwise it's not going to be sending out the packets to the right interface. And then the first uh, multicast group ID there, you want to use a multicast group ID, like in our case, uh, Vocero, we'd use 230.230.x.x um, to, um, uh, to, to test that, right? You don't want to use the multicast address of your, uh, of your controller, of course. You want to use something that's either not being used on your network or one your, your traffic that you're trying to prove is using. Uh, once you hit start, uh, you'll see a bunch of uh, you'll see a bunch of traffic down at the bottom, and then your clients, same exact thing, right? You want to make sure you just not, you want to make sure you choose the client instead of the server on that, uh, and then the only really important thing here, of course, is the network interface. Make sure you're using the right one, otherwise, you know, your, your server is going to be sending multicast packets out, and you, you're not going to be listening to it. And then the first group is very important. You've got to use the same group you used on your server, right? So you're making sure you're passing that uh, traffic. Uh, you're listening to that traffic that's being passed. You'll see some uh, uh, red lines down there, meaning you're, you're getting your uh, data. Um, and then you'll see join and uh, you see join messages and receiving data on the bottom as well. Uh, Cisco multicast uh, uh, some commands. Uh, there to do some uh, troubleshooting on multicast, uh, show PIM interface, show IP M route, IP, uh, IP uh, IJMP, and then uh, a couple of debug commands there too. Uh, on your controller there, if you do a show network, uh, it'll show you the uh, it'll sh show you the uh, verify the multicast mode, and then on your uh, if you want to look at the MGID table, right? A particular MGID table, you could do show network multicast MGID summary, or you can look at a detail on a particular one. Um, there's a bunch of really uh, great links here that I, I used to, to do this presentation here. Um, some of them are slightly old. It is one from uh, uh, Stefan Rodriguez, which is like seven years old, but it's still a lot of great information there. Um, there's, a, there's one there from uh, Cisco that uh, Cisco did for specifically for Vocera. So if you have any issues with Vocera, you can look at that one. Um, and then it, uh, there's a bunch of great videos there, too, that go into this a lot deeper than, of course, I can in 55 minutes here. Um, but um, uh, the one on the bottom there, I'm sure everyone's looked at uh, uh, MRN uh, CCIEW. Is he here? There he was. Oh. <laughs> Just say, man, that, that, that website is just awesome. I'm sure everyone here has looked at it before. Every time I look at it, it's just blown away by the information up there. But uh, it's, it's a great website. Uh, again, just summary, right? You're going to uh, make sure you're on the, you have uh, a PIM set up on your right VLANs, management VLAN, AP, a VLAN uh, for the sending and receiving devices. Uh, you want to be your DTIM want to be set to one and realize that your AP can only hold on the multicast packets as long as the DTIM value. Um, oh, sorry, you're taking a picture. Of that. Sorry. Um, and then uh, data rates. You want to make sure that, you know you're using 12 only. Um, if you're using uh, not to use the TKIP and AES on the same SSID, of course. Uh, don't use multiple rendezvous points. Use a, just one rendezvous point. Make sure you got IGMP snooping on your switches. Uh, roaming issues can happen if your client's not sending a new join message every time it roams. Uh, multicast buffers, you can see them overrun. If you have too much multicast traffic, uh, you can expand or increase the size of those multicast buffers. And then um, IGMP snooping on the controller um, should, uh, should be enabled. Uh, then we talked about troubleshooting multicast issues and then using multicast hammer. I guess I'm not supposed to have questions and discussions, right? Sorry, didn't know that. We got time. Oh, we got, <laughs> does anyone have any questions? Discussion? Oh, we go. I was supposed to share your slides. No, it's proprietary. No, of course I'm going to share them. All right, yeah. I'll give them the key. They'll be up there for a dollar. For a dollar. OK. Great. Right, Thanks. Oh, no, no, sorry. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry about Now maybe you can get two applauses. What's that? Now you can get two applauses. No, two applauses. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. But um, 
So I, I, I know this has nothing to do with wireless, uh, don't, nothing to do with multicast, but I did want to talk about two th uh, things if I have uh, two sec if I have, uh, quick uh, two minutes here. A wireless line association, I know a lot of people are involved in it. Um, if you're not involved, go look in the website, get involved with it. You can look uh, at the, you know, who's the, um, uh, the, the, the board of directors on this is a who's who, right? Keats on there, Sam's on there, Manoon, I mean, uh, Peter McKenzie. I mean, I, I, there's a who's who involved with this. The more people involved in this, the better off it'll be, right? So uh, tr try to, if you're not already involved, uh, sign up. Uh, one thing we did in uh, in North Carolina, I mentioned I was the chapter manager. We had a... Uh, we did a meetup on December 13th, uh, and when I was thinking about this meetup, I'm like, oh, it'll be great. We'll get like 20 or 30 guys there. It'll be awesome. We'll take over the Mellow Mushroom. It'll be great. Uh, as the invites started coming in, I realized I only had 10 people. And then two people had to drop out because I'm a dope. I did it on December 13th, right? Running around Christmas parades and Christmas pageants and everything like that, not thinking, right? So... Uh, so we did, uh, you know, so we, we had eight people show up, and I'm thinking, oh, great, eight people. So I, I set up a couple of uh, slides. I had one on WLA, one on uh, voice and uh, in wireless, and then another one uh, talking about ITDRC. Um, so we sat down and did a little presentation on uh, WLA, just talking about it. Two people in the, in, in, two people out of the eight had already known what WLA was and was very involved in WLA and knew a lot more than I did, which I'll, I'll show you in a second there. Um, but so we sat down, we ate, and I'm thinking, all right, I got to get back to my slides. But we had a, it, uh, we started talking, right? So I'll show you, I'll show you the people involved. But we all started talking around the table. I, we didn't have to worry about the other slides, right? And that's what the meetup is supposed to be wireless guys and girls getting together talking about different wireless things not having me up there and yak away for uh, an hour or two hours of the thing but it was a really a really good uh, thing and just to show you a quick thing who was there uh, me my buddy Mike who was a, a buddy of mine from uh, Hill Rom days um, uh, we got uh, Keith Miller packet logistics there he was he was there and then we uh, uh, Bruce, um, JD, JD Davis, uh, JD was there, Jonathan Davis. Uh, Bruce Brown is a guy from SAS. Uh, Dawn Douglas, and Dawn was around. Where is she, where is she over there? Is she over there somewhere. But, and then uh, a, a lady from uh, Vosera to Nilu was on my team. But it, it, the, the point I want to make is that, you know, the, the wireless meetup was just so great. You know, here I'm thinking, okay, we need a huge crowd, and then I need all these slides and presentations, but it turned out all we needed to just sit down over pizza, talk about wireless, and it was a really good thing. You know, the, the, this conference is amazing, right? But it can only happen once or twice a year in different conferences, right? But to get together with local guys, I really encourage if you have time to, I mean, if you have a see a local meetup in your area, uh, definitely join it, definitely join WLA. Uh, one other thing, ITDRC, I don't know how many people are involved in ITDRC here. I know, uh, I know, um, uh, Joe Hillis has been up here to talk before about it, uh, but it's a great organization. If you guys, uh, if you have any, if you need any more information about WLA or ITDRC, uh, please see me afterwards. But uh, you know, uh, uh, Joe has just done an amazing uh, a job with this. Just uh, he thought of it. I think. Uh, Maybe it was after 9-11, he thought about that you know, during disasters, there's no one providing communications. And uh, he's a retired uh, fireman, had a good life. You know, he, he was retired, didn't need to do anything, but he saw a need. He hopped up, and he's got over 1,000 volunteers and uh, more needed. So if you guys have any interest in that, come see me afterwards. All right. Thank you very much.